This Abacus tutorial teaches you how to model a welded beam column connection. In a welded joint, the beam and column are stuck together using welding. This makes a strong link that can handle heavy loads, keeping buildings and bridges secure and stable. I will also teach you how to interpret results and relate these finite element modeling results with real life examples. Hey friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer at a London university. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy and examine life. This tutorial is about modeling a welded beam to column joint using Abacus. And I will be mainly focused on drawing the load deflection curves and finding out where this joint will fail. This is the problem which I want to solve today. Universal beam 2541025 is connected with the column the section. The column section is UKB 356127 by 33. Beam and column, they are welded at this point. For these kind of joints, it is quite common practice to weld a stiffener at these locations so that there is no buckling in the web of a column. The stiffener size is 332. 59.7 by 3 and here is the side view of the joint and over here you can observe the top view in the actual book where i took this information from there are few typos which i will mention uh, in a minute this is a book i have taken this information from in fact the entire problem is taken from this book solving complex problems for structures and bridges using abacus by esfahani and the geometric properties are given including depth of the section width of the section alternatively you can simply type in steel for life that will give you tata steel blue book and from here you can simply go to dimensions and properties from here you can find the properties of 2541025 where you will get width and depth and thickness of the section and also you will get the properties for other section the material properties young's modulus poisson's ratio the yield stress is given and over here failure stress is given as well which will indicate how the joint is going to fail and plastic strain at yield is zero and at failure it is 0.25 normally you can expect this plastic strain in the range of probably 0.18 to 0.22 or something but here it's given as 0.25 these are the cross sections for column and beam load cases there are two load cases we have concentrated load applied here and we have uniformly distributed load as well so we'll be applying two load cases but for demonstration purpose i will just be using this load case and applying other load case is going to be similar to what i will do in this modeling i will be using si units using millimeter units and all lengths and all cross sections will be in millimeters force is going to be in newtons and etc as usual i'll be using these nine steps to model the problem in abacus link to all lecture slides is available at tinyurl.com slash abacus feel free to download these files and i will also be linking the chapter from the book so that so you can get a step-by-step -step process on how to model this problem in abacus but please be mindful of the fact that this book has got some typos for example here it is not 354 it is 356 here it is not ub254 actually it is 356 so these are some typos which i have corrected in the presentation the first step is part where i will create a part of column beam and segment and these are the dimensions of beams and columns so let's create this section start with abacus standard double click on part say column and part size is 3d deformable 800 and here i'm going to create I section so click here the first thing I want to do I want to create a 90 degree angle over here click on constraint perpendicular so between these two lines 90 degree has been assigned then I want equal length angle for these four lines so click here 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 and here equal length constraint has been defined then I will define equal length constraint for the thickness of the flange Press shift key, click here, click here, and click here. Equal length constraint has been defined. 
Uh, now, I, simply I'm going to dimension this to create a section. So go to dimension and this dimension is 59.7. Uh, it is saying it's over constraint. So uh, what I will do, I will create here instead 59.7. So simply I'll go to dimension. I will dimension this as 59.7. And then I will dimension this as 8.5. And I will dimension the thickness of web as 6. And then I will dimension the distance between two flanges that is 332 and if you have a look the column section has been created now click done and thousand the column has been created and then i will define a chamfer at these locations so go to chamfer and press shift key choose this line keep it pressed 10.2 chamfer has been defined i will repeat the same thing for the top flange so column has been defined now then i will define beam and dimension of beam are these so 47.958.4 240.4 .4, and thickness of web is same six millimeter to go to parts again and double click i will say beam and here Approximate size is say 600 and in the same way I will define eye section So the first thing I want to do I want to create a 90 degree angle between these two lines So click click on constraint and then go to perpendicular choose these two lines 90 degree constraint has been defined and then I want to give equal length constraint to this point this point this point and this line and then i want to give equal length constraint to this line this line this line and this line click ok and then i will give dimensions over here the dimensions are 47.95 8.4 and once i've done this then simply i will cancel the procedure and I will give depth of the section a beam has been defined and then I will go and give chamfer chamfer for this beam is 7.6 I think yeah 7.6 so click on chamfer and click on this line and keep shift key pressed and choose choose this line click done and chamfer was 7.6 press enter key chamfer has been defined if you wanted to have a look at it simply have a look at x y and then you can see chamfer has been defined the next part is segment the segment is 332 59.7 into 3 segment so simply i'll create a rectangle and i will say 59.7 and this is 332 segment has been defined and thickness is three now i have to use shape cut extrude so that i can create that chamfer portion and vertical on right is this one here i want to create a line yeah i want to dimension this line as 10.2 and i want to create another line as well and i will dimension that line as 10.2 as well and simply i will connect these two lines and i will do the same thing on the other side and simply this will create a chamfer for me through all yes chamfer has been created in that way i have defined the Parts. Second step is property module where we will define materials and assign cross sections. Double click on materials, steel, mechanical, elastic, and Young's modulus is 210000.3. And I'm going to define the plastic properties as well. The plastic properties are 
370 plastic strain is 0 460 and plastic strain is 0 0.25 i'm not going to define density over here because i'm not running any frequency analysis or i'm not running any dynamic analysis so defining density is not going to give big advantage so simply click ok and then i'm going to define a section homogeneous and steel material and then i will assign that section to all the parts simply go to section assignment choose the section and assign the section and i will go to column section as well simply double click on column and click done and assign that section and simply go to segment double click on segment and assign the segment in that way i have assign the sections then third step is assembly module where we will assemble all parts to so go to assembly and then click on instances i will insert beam instance first click ok and then i will insert the column one and column i have to rotate along x-axis so go to instance rotate and then give these points 90 I want to translate the beam to column so go to translate click here and then i want to translate the center of the beam to the center of the column and that way beam and column they have been translated before i go ahead i think i entered the thickness of the beam incorrectly so i'll go to beam and then features and then sketch and here i will click on edit dimension value i think it was 8.4 i will apply it click ok simply cancel the procedure click done and then i will regenerate the feature click on click on regenerate and then i'll go to assembly hopefully this has been reflected over here i'm going to insert next instance which is segment so click on segment and then it has to be rotated twice and then it has to be attached over here so first i'm going to rotate it with respect to y so go to instance and go to rotate and y axis would be click here and click here 90 degrees the section has been rotated and then i want to rotate it with respect to z axis go to instance and then rotate select instance and z axis is this value this point and this point 90 degrees this is fine and then i want to bring this instance over here so go to instance and then translate select the instance and choose this point and then i will choose this point over here the instance has been located the next thing i want to do is that i want to create instance which is at, at the level of bottom flange of the beam and the distance from top to bottom flange of the beam is this is about 240.4 so i will go to linear pattern and then i will choose this instance click done in x direction i don't want anything in y direction i need 240.4 and then I, I will change the direction in that way i have defined another segment and i would like one segment over here as well again i will go to instance and linear pattern and choose this instance this time i want something in x direction in y direction i don't want anything in x direction probably i'm saying 100 it is slightly away from here change the direction and now i have this instance then i have to rotate it to 180 degrees so that it fits over here so again go to instance rotate choose the instance click done i want to rotate it with respect to z axis so z axis means i will choose this point and this point and 180 degrees the position is fine then i would like to translate this instance click this instance and translate this point to this point the segment has been translated then i would like one segment down over here at the level of beam flange so to do that again i will go to linear pattern and click here and click done 
I would like a linear pattern in y direction and it was 240.4 and this is fine. In that way I have defined the assembly. Fourth step is step module where we define all analysis steps and parameters. Next step is step. I will create one step static journal and I will say push over and I will say push over. Click continue and here I'm giving time period as 10 and I will keep incrementation and everything else default. Click done. The step has been defined. Fifth is interaction module where we define contact interactions and constraints. The next is interaction and interaction. I'm going to define the base as a set and then I'm going to define a reference point. So for defining a reference point in the middle of the section, I will define a datum point. So for defining a datum point, I will go will go to assembly and then define a datum point that is midway between these two points. So click here and click here. Datum point has been defined. Now I will define a reference point at this point. So click here and that is reference point. And then I will define the set as base. You go to assembly sets. I will define a set base continue and then i will define this entire surface and then i will define base ref as well the so base ref is connected with this reference point click ok and then in interactions i would like to attach this reference point with the with the base so go to constraints and rigid body and i will say tie base click ok and then tie nodes and for surface I would choose a base, highlight in viewport, and for reference point, again, I will go to sets and I will choose this rigid reference point, and then I will adjust the nodes. In that way, I have tied up this reference point with the base. The other most important thing here is that I have to tie up everything together. It means that all these sections have to be tied up. So go to interaction, find contact pairs, and then here I will click on find contact pairs all contacts on type i will double click on type and i will try everything so whatever contacts are there they have been tied together sixth is load module where we define boundary conditions and loading once interaction is done then i will go to load in load first of all i will define a set for displacement i would like displacement over here so go to assembly and define a set double click on set say disk continue and i would like this point to be defined as displacement set and then i will define boundary conditions go to pc and i would say fix base and i would like to define this boundary condition in initial condition continue and i want to define this boundary condition to the reference point so that reference point is tied with the base surface of the column and then uh, the boundary condition will be applied to base reference so click ok and i want to define in caster which means that it will fix it into all the directions the next thing is loading i would like to define a udl of 100 newton per millimeter square and point load of 20 kilonewton so first udl and then that has to be in this pushover step pressure continue then i will choose this surface select in viewport and choose this surface click done and i would like 100 newton per millimeter square this has been defined and then i will define a concentrated load as well concentrated and here it's concentrated force continue i will choose this point and press shift key and choose this point and i want to define y direction negative 20 thousand in that way loading has been defined seventh is mesh module where we define mesh size and element type once load is defined then i will go to mesh and i want to mesh at part level first i will go to mesh controls here make sure that it is hexagonal sweep click done then element types element types are hexagonal elements as well to reduce integration click done and then i will seed the part i will seed the part at 40 global size click done and then simply i will mesh the part the part has been meshed then i will go to column and in column 
I will keep everything as it is. I will seed the part with global size is different now, 50. And simply I will mesh the part. And then I will go to segment. I'll mesh the part with 15. And then simply I will mesh the part. Uh, here, if you go and verify the mesh, so these are errors and warnings. This mesh is really not a good mesh. So uh, what I will do, I will go to part level and I will go to part level and then I will partition these two edges. So let us go and partition it. Partition. So it's asking for a cutting plane. So what I will do, I will uh, first of all create, create a datum plane. Point and normal. Simply click on this point and a plane has been created. I will create another plane as well point and normal so two planes have been created partition use datum plane so this is the datum plane create partition yes and again and this is the datum plane a partition has been created in that way you will go back to mesh again and now click on seeds and then simply use this mesh in that way you can create a mesh that works eight is job module which we use to run and monitor analysis after mesh I, I will simply go to job and then i will say push over and i will submit the analysis i will probably stop here i'll kill the analysis and then we will go away and watch see the results Ninth is visualization module used for viewing results. Again, uh, I will go to step frame and and then I will move slowly to see what's happening. At point eight, it is failing. So at point one eight, we will see that what is the load and what is the deflection. So first of all, let me plot the deflection at disp save, and then I will plot the reaction force at base reference plot and save then i will operate on data combine u and r i will multiply this with minus one load displacement two after displacement of 15 millimeter i think the model is really failing which is about this point so so this means that the load is really really very heavy and again if i continue it certainly it's going to fail so thanks for watching this lecture today i will appreciate any comments and feedback